Hello, everyone. Welcome to the video on linear regression. We have briefly introduced linear regression in our previous video. And if you've not watched it, I would recommend you watch it before you watch this particular video. We had also talked about the basic concepts in comparative statistics, like dependent and independent variable, types of variable, is it continuous or discrete data, and so on and so forth. So these are things that p-value and hypothesis testing. So these are the things that you need to acquaint yourself with before uh, going on into this video. So there are basically six assumptions in linear regression, and these assumptions must be, must be satisfied or tenable before you can carry out linear regression in a, in a data. So the first assumption is that the dependent and independent variable are continuous data. They are measured at the continuous level. The second is that there should be a linear relationship between the two variables. The third assumption is that the data should exhibit almost cadasticity. Sorry, I'll take that again. The data should exhibit almost cadasticity. The fourth assumption is that the data should have independence of observations. There should be no outliers and the residual of the regression line should be normally distributed. So we'll learn uh, more about these assumptions as we, as we go to our SPSS, and we'll learn how to interpret these assumptions. But a reminder that a linear regression checks the linearity or association between two continuous variables, and it goes further, or it, it goes some steps ahead of, Pearson correlation by predicting or by using the independent variable to predict what the dependent or outcome variable. So let's go into the practical right away. So this is a set of fictitious, fictitious data that would use to um, practicalize or practice simple linear regression. So assuming our 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 independent sorry our dependent variable is IgG, that's immunoglobulin G levels, and let's assume that every other parameter is our dependent variable. But since I'm going to do a, a simple linear regression. I would only be correlating one of the variable, one of the independent variable with the what? Dependent variable. With your, with your spare time, you can try, um, you can try other variables, you can try combining uh, other variables. So we're gonna see if each can predict IgG levels. First, we're gonna see if there's an association between what? Each and immunoglobulin G levels and would answer the question of significance. I mean, is this association significant? We'll go further to ask ourselves, can H predict immunoglobulin G levels in these study participants? So the first assumption, remember I said, before you go ahead to do a linear regression, you must satisfy about how many assumptions? Six assumptions. The first assumption is that both variables must be what? continuous. So I think that one is you can physically uh, identify the variable. So you can see that IgG is in a continuous form and then H is what? In a continuous form. Now the second uh, assumption is that there have to be a linear relationship. So to test, we'll test assumption two and three outside the regression operation window. So we go to graph, chat builder. We want to test assumption two and three right now. So the chat builder dialog box will pop up and you click OK.
So you move, you go to scatter, and then you drag the type of scatter plot you want and place it here. Then you, you click on your predictor, drag it to the X axis, then your outcome is IgG. And you do what? You click OK. The graph will come out in your output. So to check if there is a linear relationship and if uh, there is almost scedasticity, you double click on the graph because you want to insert a line of best fit. So when the chart editor uh, when this dialog box pops up, you click, uh, you come to this button that says add line, add fit line at total. So you click and then you click on, sorry, just a sec. You click on clues. Now from here already, you can see that you can see that there is a linear relationship and then uh, you can already see the uh, correlation coefficient, uh, but that's not what we want for now. We can see that there is a, a distribution of the data on both sides of the line. So this is uh, assumption number three. There, have to, there has to be almost cadasticity. So we have, um, we have, we have checked assumption number two and assumption number three, and we can say that they are tenable. So let's go on to checking assumption number four, five, and six. Remember, I told you that assumption four, five, six will be tested in the SPSS output. So going back to our Going back to our spaces. So remember that our dependent variable is what? Immunoglobulin G. And our independent variable is H, meaning we want to see how H can do what? Predict immunoglobulin G levels in the study participant. So we go to graph, sorry, we go to analyze regression linear now this linear regression dialog box will pop up or will show and then you'll see a small box that says dependent and another box that says independent or independent so what is your dependent variable your outcome igg the thing that you want to predict the thing that the independent variable will influence so you put your dependent variable, your independent variable in the box for independent. Remember, you can have more than one independent variable. But since we want to do uh, a simple correlation, we'll be using only one dependent, sorry, only one dependent variable. Now at this point, you can click OK and the result of your regression analysis will come up. But since we are doing other tests to check the assumption of the data. There is need for us to check other statistics. So uh, this is not the assumption, but in case you need it, you can check confidence interval descriptives. And for assumption four, independence of observations, you click the Dobbin Watson test for assumption five, Significant outliers, you click on what? Case-wise 
diagnostics and you click continue. Then you go to plot. We want to test assumption six that says so that the residual or error associated with the data should be what normally distributed. So you can see Z predicts, shorten as Z pred. You put the Z pred in the X box and the Z residual, shorten as Z recede in the Y box. And then you can you know use both histogram and normal probability plot or call PP plot to interpret the outcome, but I would use on you can use both. You can use either. I want to use the normal probability plot to test assumption what six. So you click on continue and then you click on OK. Your regression is ready for interpretation. So this is your regression output window. Uh, before you go into interpreting these tables, before you go into interpreting your regression, let us first um, test assumption what four, five, and six. So remember, I said to test assumption four. What statistics do we use? Dobbin Watson test. It is under the model summary table. Now. For assumption four to be tenable, or for also agree that there is independence of observations, the David Watson statistics has to be between one and three. It should not be less than one, and it should not be greater than what three. So we can see that the David Watson statistics in my case is one point eight four one. So what do you say? It is tenable. There is independent observation. There's independence of observation, sorry. So for as option five, that says there should be no significant outlier. You use your residual statistics table to test this. Now your standard residual, your minimum standard residual should not be what? Less than negative 3.2. And your maximum standard residual, we're talking about the standard residual now. In this table, you can see predicted value, residual, standard predicted value, and standard residual. What we are rolling with, or what we're using to check if there is a significant outlier is what? The standard residual. So we had said that the minimum standard residual should not be less than negative 3.2 and should not be higher than what? positive 3.2. So you can see that it is not higher than what? 3.2, but it is slightly, it is slightly lower than negative 3.2. Remember that negative 3.8, approximately, this is 3.9, is slightly higher than negative 3.2. So because the, the outlier is not significant. It is okay to ignore. We can say that assumption four, or sorry, five is justified. Now for assumption six, that says the, the error associated with the data or the residual associated, associated, sorry, with the data should be what? Normally distributed. So you can see that there is a normal distribution of the data in both sides of this linear graph. And that is when you say that your assumption six is tenable or justified. If there was an histogram, the histogram would take the histogram would take a bell or a dome shape. And you would see that the and you would say that the assumption is tenable. All right, so we can now go ahead to interpreting our regression, having tested all the assumptions, and we agree that our data is 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 good to go. There is no outlier. There is no. Um, let's say we have answered all the questions that we should answer before doing the regression analysis. 
So the first table is the descriptive statistics table. It just tells you the mean and the standard deviation and of course the number of terms of your dependent and independent variable. So going forward, you meet your correlation table. So it tells you the Pearson correlation value, which is of course your R value. So you can see that there is a, a fairly strong uh, positive correlation between what H and immunoglobulin G given by the value 0 0.395. And you can see that the p-value is 0 0.009, meaning that this positive correlation is what? Significant. So let's go to another important table, model summary. So you can see your r, your r square, and adjusted r square, and so on and so forth. So your r square, sorry, your r value is essentially the same thing with what? your Pearson correlation value. So it just tells you the, the strength of correlation between the two variables. Now, R square uh, tells you the, uh, most times is interpreted in percentage. So if you convert this to percentage, it becomes 15.6%. It tells you the percentage of variability in the dependent variable that is attributed to the independent variable. I'll take that again. It simply tells you that the, the independent variable is responsible for 15.6% of the changes or the variance you will see in what? Your dependent variable. So 15.6% of the variance in your dependent variable is caused by your independent variable. Now, most authors use, or oh, sorry, most writers, most researchers use the value of adjusted R square to mean the same thing with R square. All right, so this is your ANOVA table. ANOVA table tells you the significance or the strength or the relevance or the importance of your model. So if it is um, how above the alpha value, it tells you that your model is not significant, meaning that it, it, this prediction you're doing doesn't make sense that each, um, this model, the model of using each to predict um, IgG is not making sense. Maybe age is not what you're supposed to use, or it's, it's not just significant. It is not, a, it, it's not better than not using any model. But now that it's significant, it shows that, okay, that this model, this uh, plan that we have written out, that we have drawn to predict the outcome is a sensible one. It's a reasonable one. That means we are on the right track. Because if this model is not significant, it therefore means almost everything we are doing here is a waste of time and we may not go further from here. All right, going forward, we have your coefficient table. This is also another very important, um, um, another very important table in your linear regression. Apart from the fact that you can see your confidence intervals, uh, there there is something important you need to look at. And um, before then, let us look at the before we come back to this table. Let us look at the linear regression coefficient. Remember that in our O-level math, we have been taught that the e equation for uh, for um, a, a straight line graph is what? Y is equals to mx plus c. So it's the same thing with the linear regression model. The equation for the linear regression is Y is equals to mx plus c. Some people will say plus b. Uh, this is simply a constant, so you can uh, essentially use any later. So in this case, in the case of linear regression, y is your dependent variable, the thing that you want to predict. x is your independent variable, the predictor, what is trying to affect the guy that is trying to influence the dependent variable. And it could be more than one. Like I told you, this is a simple model, and we're using only one predictor. So we could have MX1 plus MX2 plus MX3 and so on and so forth. So we have the slope. 
and we have the constant term. So that table that we just saw will give us value for the slope and the constant term. And we can now predict the dependent variable with different values of x. Remember, I told you that one of the things about regression is that it can predict. So if I know the age of the patient or the study participant, I can predict the immunoglobulin G levels. So let's uh, look, let's go back to our, let's go back to our uh, SPSS screen. So this, uh, where you see constant 2.927.150, that is a constant of under the unstandardized coefficient column. So this B, unstandardized coefficient B, 2927.150 is the C of our regression equation. And you replace this value in that equation. Whereas 11.020 is what? Is your slope and you replace it where you have M. So just to know it, you can see the significant value here. And you can see the upper and lower bound of the 95% uh, confidence interval. So just to tell you that these values are significant. So let's go back to let's go back to the equation and see how this makes sense or what or why we even need to do this. So if I should input my slope value 11.020 and input my constant value 2927.150. And I impute any value of x, I would be able to predict what the immunoglobulin G or the outcome. And what this is telling us is that for every unit change in age, there is a, a, there is 11.020 increase or change in what the depending variable for every increase in age, there is 11.020 increase in the dependent variable. So that is it basically for linear regression. Most people, most researchers will report the R square value. Some we will report the unstandardized coefficient value. So it all depends on what is obtainable in the in in the study that in the particular study that you want to um you want to you want to carry out so that is all for linear logistics regression i really hope this helps